the McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. Last time we were talking about what a function is. And there's two ways of thinking about a function. We talked about a function as a rule, and it can be seen as a value. Unary functions take a single input, but we can also define enary functions. These are functions that take any number of inputs. And we talked about how an enary function can be represented as a unary function in one of two ways. It can be represented as a function in tuples. And it can also be represented as a curried function. And a curried function is a function that takes, you can see down here, takes an input, and then that's applied to another input, and another input, and so forth. Okay, so let's think a bit about how functions are defined and used in Haskell. A function definition has a very simple form. Here it is. It's given in this box. It has two parts. It has this first line which is a declaration of the type of the function, and then it has the actual definition. So if we look at the type, we can see this is a function that takes an argument and returns a function. That's the type of the function it returns. And that function could all that type could also be a type of a that takes a argument, an input, and returns a function, and so forth. So that's what the type looks like. You can see it has um, it has n input types and an output type. And now if we look at what the, how the function is defined, we have the function name, and then we have n what are called formal parameters. They are names for the inputs. And those formal parameters usually will occur in E. Now, E could be a very complicated expression, but it's how we define what the function does when it's given those formal parameters. So that's the basic idea of what how Haskell uh, function definition looks. Um, so let's look at a simple example. This is an example of a function called minus. Minus takes an integer as an input, returns a function that takes an integer as an input, and then finally returns an integer. So if you feed it, like we do here in our definition, if we feed it both inputs right away, then we can define the result. And the result is m plus the negation of n. So the important thing is it looks like it's a regular function that takes two arguments, but actually it's not really quite like that. It's a function that takes one argument and that returns a function that takes another argument that returns the final result. In this case, they are all integers. Okay, so that's a function definition in Haskell. So how do we use these functions? We need to have something which is called a function application. So a function application is very simple. It looks like this. It's the name of the function f right here. And then we give it the n arguments. Actually, we could give it if we wanted to, less than n arguments, but usually you give it the full n arguments. And each n, each argument, a to the i here, has to have the right type. And we call these arguments actual parameters because they're not just 
names for the inputs, they're actual inputs. And these are these A's could be very complicated expressions in general. And this application is an expression in itself, and it has a value, and that value will have a type, and that type will be the output type of f. Now, in functional programming, what we do over and over again is we define functions, we make function applications, and then we want to evaluate function applications. So if we have this function application here, we want to evaluate it. And the impl implementation of our language does the evaluation for, our si for ourselves. And basically the way it works, let me clean up this bit a bit. The way it cleans up this is it takes these actual parameters and it substitutes them for the formal parameters in E. And then it simplifies the result. This is what, when I was in uh, middle school and high school, I learned as plug and chug. This is how we do evaluation, plug and chug. We plug in the values for the, action, for the formal parameters, and then we chug. Chug means we do whatever we can to simplify it. So here's an example of minus. Remember we had minus before. We can look right up here. Here's the definition of minus. So what we do, if we're going to apply minus to 4 and 9, we replace m with 4 and n with 9 in this expression down here. And then what we do is we chug. So when we replace that, we're going to have something that looks like 4 plus minus 9, like this. And chug means we simplify and we get minus 5. That's basically how function application, uh, a function application is evaluated. Okay, so... Let's move on. So in Haskell, all functions are unary. But if we want to have a nary function, we can do it just as I showed you. We can make, we can have a curry function, or we can have a function of tuples. So here's what a definition of a function of tuples is going to look like. It's going to have a type, and it's going to have a definition. So if we look at the type, the type, if you think right here, if we look at this type right here, it looks a whole lot like the type up here, right? But they're not the same. They're not the same at all. It looks similar, but they're not the same. The difference is is here, this type takes a single input and returns an output. That, but that single input is a tuple. So that means it's a sequence of values. And so f here is applied to a single input, which is a tuple, which is actually a sequence of n values so even though technically it's a unary function, it's a way of representing an nary function. So let's take an example. So we have a binary function here. It's a function that takes x and y, it squares x, squares y, and adds those together. And we're thinking of this as a function on the integers. OK, so how do we do this in Haskell? Well, there's two ways of doing it. We can do it as a curried function. Here it is. It takes an integer, takes another integer. Well, it takes an integer, returns a function, takes an integer, that returns an integer. And here's the definition. Looks very, very similar 
to this definition up here. That is the curried way. Now if we write it as a function that takes a tuple, we have a different type, and now it takes, in this case, this is a tuple which is just an ordered pair, it takes an ordered pair, and now we have the we have to deconstruct the ordered pair. We have to find, get the first component square and get the second component square. So you can see if we're actually using tuples, there's more work to be done than if we did it in the curried way. But we're going to see later that Haskell provides us something that's very useful, which is called pattern matching. And in this case, we could, instead of using this as our definition, we can use this as this is our definition down here. So in this case, we we can say, well, we're going to take a pair, but we could write the pair down as a pattern composed of x and y, and then we could write it like this. So if you look at that this definition right here, this way of writing it, that is that is very close to this definition. Okay, so let's move on. I have a question for you. This is, which of the following is, which of the following is a legitimate expression in Haskell? So it's going to be helpful if we erase these things. So down here we have F1 and F2, and they refer to the F1 and F2 up here. Okay, so which of these is a legitimate expression in Haskell? That's the question. Stop your video, think about it for a moment, and then I'll give you the answer. Okay, welcome back. Let's look at F1. F1 up here takes an integer, and we're giving an integer. So this looks like a legitimate expression. F1 here, in this case, is taking a pair of integers, but notice F1 takes an integer. This is not a legitimate expression because it doesn't, basically we have a type error. We're giving F1 something in the wrong type. We're giving it a pair when we should be giving it an integer. Now let's look at F2. F2 takes a pair of integers, and here we're giving an integer. This is wrong. This is not a legitimate expression. We have a type error again. And now if you look at F2, it gets a pair of integers. That's what it's supposed to take up here. So A and B, A and D, I should say. A and D are legitimate expressions. B and C are not because they are expressions that involve type errors. Okay, that will end this lecture. Thank you very much.